Hi, and uh, welcome back to the last section of the class. Um, and in this last section of the class, we're going to do a few things. Uh, so in the first section, we talked about the financial tools and the mathematical tools that we use to understand finance and to understand how companies operate. And then in the second section of the class, what we just finished, we talked about how to use those tools to analyze and evaluate a company's projects and uh, financial capital. In this last section of the, co uh, of the, uh, of the class, we're going to do two things. The first is we're going to talk about how to analyze our analysis. In other words, one of the main things a company needs to do is to look back at all the projects that it's decided to take and try to see and try to understand uh, what the process looked like and how we can improve it going forward. Remember, we've made a bunch of predictions about the future. Now we want to try to understand uh, whether those predictions were any good and whether we can use the things we've learned in the past to help guide our decision making in the future. And then we're going to talk about risk in a great, in a great uh, bit of detail to try and arrive at uh, uh, something called the weighted average cost of capital, which is the required return for a company uh, based on its risk level. So that's where we stand. We're nearly done with the class. We've got a few more chapters to go. Uh, this last section of the class only covers three chapters, chapter 11, 13, and 14. Uh, so it's a little bit shorter, um, and, uh, and, and we cover just uh, a little bit less material. Um, but it's really important, so, so we want to make sure to highlight it in the right ways. Okay. So we'll start here with chapter 11, which is on uh, project analysis. And again, this is where we're trying to analyze the projects that we've already taken. Um, and to understand maybe a little bit more about the decision process uh, to help guide us in the future uh, in, in making better choices. And so the first thing that we want to talk about uh, is called sensitivity analysis. And sensitivity analysis is the analysis of the effects on MPV when we change any one of the contributing variables in our, uh, our net present value analysis. So that means we want to understand the effect of sales on net present value. We want to understand the effect of costs, of taxes, of depreciation. How do our estimates of all these variables affect the outcome of deciding whether to take the project or not? What we say is, how sensitive is our decision to take this project? to our prediction about sales or costs or any of the other variables that are important for this project. We want to try and get a sense of how close we are to the decision hurdle. In other words, the hurdle is the, the level that we have to clear in order to take the project. So how close are we to that hurdle um, with our current set of predictions and, uh, and, and where are we going with it? So let's look at a simple example here. Uh, we're going to have a 12-year project. The cash flows for the project are going to be the same in every year. So we're going to have an investment of 5.4 million, and then sales of 16 million, variable costs of 13, fixed costs of 2 million, depreciation, pre-tax profit, taxes, after-tax profit. We'll use those to calculate operating cash flow of 780,000. And then what we have net cash flow, but uh, that's just another term for cash flows from assets. Uh, so we're going to assume that this project doesn't, uh, it doesn't have any other intermediate changes in networking capital or capital, net capital spending. And so the cash flows from assets are equal to operating cash flow in the intervening years other than the initial one. So if we take our net present value at 8%, uh, with a required return of 8% rather, uh, we get a positive MPV project on this. $478,000. So you can look here at the uh, Excel worksheet that's provided. It's on As You Learn. Uh, it's right there in the same folder with all the Chapter 11 materials. Um, so you can look at this first tab, and this is the project splayed out in Excel terms all the way through the 12 years of the project. Notice that the sales are the same, costs are the same. Uh, we're, we're calculating costs as a percentage of sales, so here 81.25% of sales our variable costs. These are the things that are inputs into the product that we're making. We got fixed costs of $2 million there, depreciating the asset investment um, at $2 million a year. Uh, that gives us EBIT. EBIT 
plus taxes minus depreciation gives me operating cash flow of 780,000. And then because we don't have any investment in, or change in networking capital, and we don't have any additional change in capital spending, our, our, our net cash flow here, our cash flow from assets, I, I should have been more careful there, uh, our cash flow from assets is the same as our operating cash flow in every year. Remember, cash flow from assets is operating cash flow minus the change in networking capital minus net capital spending. And so if we don't have any change in networking capital and net capital spending, cash flow from assets is the same as operating cash flow. So we take our net present value by taking the present value of these 12 years of future cash flows and then subtracting the initial cost. And we see that this project is a positive one. So all of our predictions for this project, uh, if they all hold true, we're going to make $478,000 uh, on this project, which is a great project. So we accept it. What we want to do with sensitivity analysis is try to understand how sensitive our decision here, how sensitive is our net present value to all of our specific predictions in the income statement. And we're going to go one by one and try to look at how net present value changes when I change my estimate for each of these different variables. So it looks like this, right? This is sensitivity analysis. And remember, we're just changing one variable at a time to try and understand which one is the most or which ones are the most significant and which ones are the least significant in our analysis. So we'll start, uh, we'll start by looking at the top row. It says investment in thousands again. So we're talking about millions of dollars here. And then the first three columns there, where it says range, these are the potential uh, predictions and how they might change. So our baseline prediction is there in the middle with expected column. And notice that here is where we see the numbers that are associated with what we just saw in the Excel. So $5.4 million investment, $16 million in sales in every year, Variable costs that are 81 and a quarter percent of sales, fixed cost of $2 million. Those are our expected values. And when we look at the next three columns, what so it says net P in NPV at 8%, this is the net present value given that all of those assumptions in that column are what we see. So again, we see the expected NPV column is 478,000 because those are the numbers that we calculated that initial net present value at. Right? Now, what you see on either side of the expected columns are columns saying optimistic and pessimistic. And this is what we're after in sensitivity analysis. We're gonna look at what are more optimistic predictions. In other words, we here have our expected prediction that our initial investment will be $5.4 million. But a more optimistic prediction would say that our investment is actually less than that. We don't need to invest as much money because we, we find whatever we're buying, fixed assets or whatever, we find it cheaper. So an optimistic prediction would be $5 million instead of 5.4. And you can see that right there in that third column. And a more optimistic prediction of sales would say that we have better sales than we thought. And a more optimistic prediction about costs would predict that we have lower costs than our expectation. Right? And so what we see is how does net present value change when I change only one of these predictions to be more optimistic and I leave the rest of my predictions uh, at their expected levels. So if my prediction about investment is not optimistic enough, in other words, the investment I require to take the project is less, it's 5 million instead of 5.4, but all the other variables, sales, variable costs, and fixed costs are in their expected range. Uh, then notice that over there on the far right column, my net present value jumps up from 478,000 to 778,000, right? Because my initial cost is lower. So when I add up all the present values of my future cash flows and I subtract the initial cost, I'm gonna have a higher net present value because my initial cost is lower, right? And you can see that then walking down that net present value table, the optimistic side, that is the net present value. Each row is the net present value if one, the one of those variables is more optimistic than, we, uh, than what was expected, and all the other three are still in their expected ranges. So we can see that if sales were higher, but our investment and costs were expected, what we expected, we have a huge jump in net present value. From 478,000 predicted net present value 
to 2.1 million in expected in, in net present value, uh, which is a huge jump. And, uh, and you can see likewise that we have big jumps if variable costs are lower than expected and if fixed costs are lower than expected. But by far the biggest jump is, in a chain, is for a change in sales. Right? So we see that sales has a very significant impact on that present value and our, our prediction about future sales is gonna be, spoiler alert, the most sensitive variable in almost any NPV project analysis. Uh, and that's just because it's the top line. Sales determines everything else. If costs are a percentage of sales, if we need the level of fixed assets to justify sales, then our depreciation is gonna be a percentage of sales, things like that. So we see that the biggest swing on the optimistic side comes from sales and secondly, from variable costs. Now, on the other side is the pessimistic column, and pessimistic is just the opposite. These are what happens if all of our expectations are wrong, but they're wrong in a bad way. In other words, my costs are higher than what I thought, my sales are lower than what I thought, and my investment is more significant than what I thought I was going to need. And so these are likely to affect net present value in a negative way. And you can see when we look at the MPV for these pessimistic scenarios, or since uh, um, pessimistic outcomes for these variables that changing one variable to its pessimistic outcome uh, is likely to put us into negative NPV and so uh, be and, and so in which case we would have a, po a, a bad project that we would want to reject. So we can see that the uh, pessimistic outcome for investment is that our investment is 6.2 million instead of 5.4 and that would cause our NPV to go from 478,000 to minus 121,000. And likewise for sales and variable costs and fixed costs, uh, we, uh, we see that you know, with lower sales and higher costs, our net present value falls to negative uh, in many cases, uh, from a positive amount to a negative account in many cases.